It's Wednesday, May the 10th, and you're tuned in to the Chinese Podcast. I'm Vince. I'm Anthony. And this is the Geek Sheet Culture Show, where we talk about all the cool things in the world. We're back. Yes, we are. I'm back. You're back. The podcast has returned. Yay. Yes. <laughs> uh, apologies on my behalf. I did actually record a show last week. Yeah, sure you did. We talked about anime. Yeah, sure you did. We talked about one anime. Sure, of course you did. It's not the anime you think it is, Anthony. What is it? I went to a toy show last week. You can confirm this. Okay. I can confirm you went to a toy show. Yes, yes. I talked to my friend Dane, and Dane talked my ear off 47 minutes full of Attack on Titan. (laughs) Why? (laughs) Because uh, me and Dane, we have this thing where uh, he hates everything I love. All Uh, right. Like May. I like them all. From Overwatch. He hates May. Oh, he loves Overwatch. He hates May. I can't get behind this person anymore. Uh, I could get behind hating everything you love, but yeah. I can't get behind hating he will call the me Bay out. of the Year. He will call me out <clears throat> from across the dealer room just to say, May's shit. But your your wife who's diva. I know, but I love May too. Yeah, May is Bay. Uh, uh, and we have. Some, I know we have some audience members here who can confirm the story that he does do this. Okay. Uh, and then so I said, well, well, let's talk about some anime. What anime do you like? And he loves Attack on Titan. Yo. The, uh, <clears throat> so Attack on Titan <laughs> is, like, not good. Uh, but yeah, so I basically told him I have never seen Attack on Titan, which is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Yes, you have. Uh, he's fully caught up with the manga, and then he proceeded to tell me about everything from the beginning to where they currently are. Wait, so he just full-on spoiled all of Attack on Titan? I said to him, go for it, because I'm never going to watch it if you can convince me otherwise, and so he went all out. So we sat at a bar, it was a bit crowded, and I set up the recording, and, uh, I don't know. I guess, I, I thought I set it up correctly, but apparently I didn't. So, but it's okay, because now that I think about it, it was honestly him talking for 47 minutes, and I would just say, yes, and uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Now that I think about it, that might not have been super entertaining, and it could have pissed off a couple people who are watching the current series, or season of Attack on Titan. Yeah, you, at the front of that episode, <laughs> you just put it, hey, do you like Attack on Titan? Stop listening! So I now know everything about Attack on Titan. Wow. Is this still shit? I don't know. It's what I, there's too much information to process. <laughs> All right, so I got a special episode for you uh, where we go to a bar uh, and I talk your ear off. Oh, a JoJo's Bizarre no. Adventure. <laughs> All eight parts. I'll tell you. Do you want to know what my secret episode was? What? What I had planned before I went to the toy show was uh, farting with the shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Was uh, I actually was gonna watch? I would like do a commentary on the first episode of JoJo. Wow! And then in the second half, I would I would uh, make it a video portion and stream my first game of League. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that while I'm not here? Because I thought that would have been hilarious. It would have been great to watch. I would have been like, "Wow, you're doing everything wrong." <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. But this week we watched Guardians of the Galaxy. We did. We, there's a couple bits of news you got to catch up on. You're gonna tell us about your trip. Yeah. And uh, we got more planned in store, especially catching up on Common Rider. Yeah. So let's get into it. Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Volume 2, it's here, it's out in theaters, stars the Baby Groot and company, and... Uh... <laughs> I like how Baby Groot <laughs> is the main character. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you're, and, and you're a regular compadre of spacefaring Marvel heroes. Yeah. Special guests include Kurt Russell and Kurt Russell. <laughs> No, oh, Kurt Russell. Oh, uh, not as important as Kurt Russell. Okay, all right, Kurt Russell. Um, uh, and as you know, with all the reviews here, we are spoiler filled. So. Yeah, not not free. <laughs> none, of this, none of this free shit. We're spoiler filled. Now you know we are going into it. So, Anthony, tell me about Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Hey, yo, did you did you? I, I want you to guess what what I think about it. Pretty awesome. So, like, did you... It's kind of surprising that a really enjoyable movie mm-hmm. was really enjoyable. Mm. It's kind of nuts, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The movie that's made to be endearing mm-hmm. and charming mm-hmm. was endearing and charming. Yeah, it certainly was. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy continues to stand as my favorite in the Marvel... Okay. In the Marvel Universe, in the Marvel series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they continue off where... 
where the last movie was. They are mm-hmm. they are now mm-hmm. world or galaxy known bounty hunters. Yeah. People are calling them for cool jobs and to do stuff. Mm-hmm. It seems like nothing's really changed. Uh, and as the team is sort of having infighting and stuff, uh, Peter Quill finds his dad. Uh huh. Peter in in the form of Jeff Bridges. Mm-hmm. Is it Jeff Bridges? Uh, or is it Kurt Russell? I thought it was Jeff Bridges. It's Kurt Russell. Is it? It's Kurt Russell. You sure? Jeff Bridges is Tron. Jeff Bridges is Tron. You're correct. This is Kurt Russell. They look exactly the same. Well, the beard doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, the yes. beard does not help. I thought it was Jeff Bridges the whole time. <laughs> yes. So Kurt Russell is, is the dad. Uh, it turns out, you know, he's the guy who leads the special covert ops in the Fast and the Furious series. Oh, oh! Ah, now, Mr. now it Nobody. makes sense. Now you see it. Now I see it. They're still the same. That's not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All these white people, man, they just look the same. Oh, God. I know how you feel. I know. Oh, God. Can't tell them apart. So, um, Kurt Russell uh, is, is a celestial. He's a god. He is a god. He was born at the beginning of the universe or some at some point when the universe was expanding. And he was like, man, I, I could think for myself. I can make all this cool shit. Yeah. But I'm just alone, man. Yeah. And so he went to Earth. Found a cutie patootie with a hot bod. That's what you want to call it? Yeah. Banged out a kid. Yep. And that kid is Chris Pratt's character. Mm-hmm. And it turns that explains why uh, Star-Lord could hold an Infinity <clears throat> Stone. Mm-hmm. And it it kind of explains some other things of, like, why was he chosen to be taken from Earth out of all these people? Mm-hmm. Um, and you learn eventually, like, later on about why Kurt Russell... Wanted to meet up with Star Lord again. Yeah, but the, I want to I want to talk about the first thing of the of the pretty much the family relationship or the family tone they have going through the whole movie. Like the main beat of this story is family is important. Yeah, never turn your back on family. Fast and the Furious. If you eat first, you have to say grace. Wait, oh, wait, no, sorry. I okay, I uh, see. And you don't, you don't turn your back on family. You don't turn your back on family, Monica. <laughs> They <laughs> they drift spaceships through a quantum asteroid field. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's I couldn't stop thinking about Fast and the Furious when watching this movie. Wow! Like I just wanted wow. I wanted Groot to just turn into actual Vin Diesel. Oh my god! And just be like, Hey, you never turn your back on family. Yeah. Right. Nobody likes those tuna fish sandwiches. <laughs> well, I like them. Right? This is waiting for that thing to happen. Like, Zoe Zelnada is just making tuna fish sandwiches. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> that'd be great. And I just couldn't get it off my mind the whole time. But their little, um, their version of family, their version of the, the misfits that they are to come together to make their own yeah. kind of special family it is... It's fun. Mm-hmm. It's fun. It's endearing. It gets the message across, and yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, there's, there's also the fact, or there's also the the part of this the soundtrack in this in this movie. Yes, the first movie had had a great soundtrack, a lot of like nineteen late nineteen seventies yep. stuff, early eighties <clears throat> music. Uh, but I think this movie tops that soundtrack by being aware of the soundtrack. Uh. There is a lot of times where, uh, so, th- so for instance, the beginning battle. Yeah. Baby Groot is chilling by a stereo, mm-hmm. and Rocket Raccoon is just he's setting up a stereo, and they're like, "Why are you doing this?" He's like, "Well, Peter, Peter likes all his music and stuff, <laughs> so I'm trying to." He wanted me. He's like, "No, this is really irresponsible. You're wasting a lot of time setting yeah. up this music, right?" And Groot puts in the speakers. Yeah. And. They bring the the soundtrack to the forefront, and it's not this mysterious thing that only the only the audience is hearing. Mm-hmm. It's actually a part mm-hmm. of the universe, and it's sure. a part of a character. Yeah. Uh, this also happens later on, where uh, the what's his face? Not not Jeff Bridges. <laughs> Kurt Russell. <laughs> Kurt Russell. Ego. Is, yeah, Ego is talking to Star Lord, and he's saying like, "Oh, like I recognize all these songs from when I dated your mom." And you, the per, the fisherman in this song is us, right? We are bringing gifts from afar. And outside of movies that are 
dedicated to music and like telling you about music. I haven't seen a movie give such respect to a soundtrack and I I really enjoyed it. And it made me, it made me enjoy the soundtrack even more. Yes. The fact that they did break down the lyrics to relate it to a story. Mm -hmm. The fact that the characters do um, acknowledge that the music is a thing within the, within Uh the movie. And I really, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Yep. Right. The other the other parts of the movie are somewhat tr- like tropey. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, get to the reactor core mm-hmm. so we can blow up the thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, this thing that you thought was all fine and dead. You think the, the thing you thought was too good to be true turned out too good to be true. Mm-hmm. And then <clears throat> a twist happens, and you gotta you need to stop it. Uh, everything in this movie was really tightly packed, which makes me wish it was longer. Really? Yeah. So it was almost three hours. So it was almost three hours, but I it didn't feel like it. Mm-hmm. And also, I, I felt that a couple, maybe like an extra half hour, would have really gone a long way in explaining certain uh, character story arcs so they don't 100%, feel super rushed. 100%. There's a lot going on in this movie, yeah. which if five after credit sequences didn't tell you that a lot is going on in this movie, yeah. then watching the movie should have told you. Yeah. Because there's there's so many characters. They're trying to reveal new sides of existing characters, yeah. but also just brand new characters. They're trying to make these arcs, make you care for these characters mm-hmm. and uh, possibly add them to a team. Yeah. I, I just wish it was a, a little longer. Yeah. Right. And it's not necessarily a bad thing because mm-hmm. that movie, the movie the whole time was, was fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, Overall, I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I still think it it's probably my favorite Marvel one, even surpassing the first one. You think this is better than the first Guardians? I think this is best, better than the first Guardians. Okay. Uh, it, I, everything just came together for me to care about everybody. It's, it's, like, uh, it's like the opposite of what happened in Age of Ultron. Okay. Age of Ultron was this dark middle chapter. Yeah. Or it was this middle chapter that's both uh, taking information you know... Yeah. And expanding upon it and yeah. bringing new stuff, yeah. but it I think that movie failed uh, on delivering that information, and it made it very boring, oh, okay. and it made the movie feel very long. Okay. Whereas this Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two mm-hmm. is explaining a lot and bringing in new characters and new information, mm-hmm. but it did it in such a way that was engaging. Uh, <clears throat> it wasn't beating you over the head with information, and mm-hmm. it kind of respected you as a viewer. Right, it's like oh, this thing happened in a movie. We maybe mention it once or twice mm-hmm. that it happened in the last movie, but other than that, we just because we uh, think you're smart, we're just gonna keep going. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's it's really good. Mm. I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Like, super, super high recommendation. Mm. Interesting that you bring up Age of Ultron because. That's how I feel about this movie. Oh, exactly. You know how when you watch Avengers and you're like, this is an entertaining film. But if you were to critic, like if you were to evaluate it on its own, you'd be like, it doesn't really pull itself together. What you need to do is watch the standalone movies to bring, so that you know each character. Okay. I feel like Guardians has that problem now. Do you think that they need standalone movies? No, I don't want a standalone movie like Yondu and Rocket or like uh, Drax and Mantis. But I'm just saying, there's too much in this movie, and a lot of the resolutions just happen like overnight. They just turn immediately yeah that's where i i i'm saying that i think that uh an yeah. extra half like an hour, I, th- I think minutes. i think he goes sudden first of all when he walks in you know he's the bad guy yeah but even just his his sudden switch and his reason is completely stupid it's it's like the mind of an immortal thing yeah i think that the the fact that he pretty much made peter turn on him by himself like his his crew had nothing to do with it yeah right was kind of dumb yeah uh just like oh hey like i i put that tumor yeah. in your mom's brain yeah but it was for the greater good and then peter just fucking goes ape shit and yeah it's just death. like wait what like that just happened yeah that part was uh was a little i feel like weird i walked in wanting to see the guardians and what i walked out with was hey yondo yondu the hero <laughs> Best dad, yeah, and I'm just dad like, of the year. Where were the guardians the whole time? Like, they were, I had fun watching Nebula and and Gamora sort out their sisterly love. I think they they went over the top with Drax. They should have toned him back. 
Well, Dra- I think the thing they didn't realize is that the reason Drax was so popular in the first movie is because there there wasn't so much of him. Yeah, right? and, and, and his... then they went overboard. Yeah. And I, I, I just kind of got sick of him. Uh, Mantis was a complete waste. I liked Mantis a lot. She was nothing but the butt of everyone's joke. She, she was, was, but I thought she was, uh, she was a good side character. So Groot has Rocket. Uh, Peter has Gamora. Gamora, but Drax really has nobody mm-hmm. to to riff off of, mm-hmm. right? And I think uh, Mantis is mm-hmm. Drax's yeah. secondary in yeah. like comedic crime. Maybe I don't know. I feel like Drax could have been fine just just being that way with Peter, like he does usually through the whole really? movie. Okay, yeah, like he's like that um, sort of dumb best friend. Like I feel like that's fine. They could work hmm. with that because it's not like uh, let's see, it's not like Star Lord and Gamora have an actual love thing going on. No, they have that unwritten thing, you yeah. know, or else the series would be canceled. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I guess I, I coming off the first one, I expected this to be like a big, a bigger, grander adventure. And it is everything I expected, but it was nothing more. Okay. And the whole movie takes place in one planet with absolutely nothing there. It doesn't expand the universe. It doesn't show me anything else. And I kind of got really bored. Really? Yeah, on Ego's planet, I was just like, let's just wrap this shit up. I See, I really liked the, all the, the interpersonal drama be- between the crew, between mm-hmm. the sisters and all yeah. that stuff. Like, I love the, like, the best part of this movie, again, was Yondu, Rocket, and Groot doing their thing. When they're on their own. Okay. When Star Lord split the party. Yeah, and when when yeah when Star Lord, Drax, and Gamora left, it was like everything they were doing was kind of just boring. Hmm. Uh, except when Nebula shows up with a spaceship and she's like, "I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm gonna fucking run you over with this fucking yeah, spaceship." That was the best part. I thought her scene where she's fixing all of her broken bones from the crash was really gross. They do that in the first movie. Yeah, and it's gross again. Yeah. Okay. But it, it's still pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I thought this movie was good. I just thought it could have... I thought... I guess I was expecting a whole lot more, because sequels usually run that tag of, like, bigger, better, badder. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this was just the same, same, same. I, I'm kind of not... I, I don't have that issue with, yeah. the, like, more of the same of Guardians. It's, I feel like after Guardians came out, Marvel movies in general tried to be more like Guardians. And it's so? like, And I'm... Like because I, I can't think of another one that's like Guardians. I, I mean, more of an in tone. They're trying to fit in more jokes. They're trying to fit in more. Uh, I would say they've always been that way. Maybe I'll have to rewatch it, but I, I felt like after Guardians, there's more of it. Right? They're Maybe. like, oh, people really liked this thing. I don't know. So we'll I think you should cram- watch the first Iron Man. Maybe I should because there's a lot of jokes. In like that one. even looking at the the new Thor Ragnarok trailer. Yeah, but that's just the marketing thing. True. Right? Like, that's just the marketing thing. Like, you have no idea if that... Like, because the second Thor movie, I would say, maybe not as funny, but it kind of went for that similar tone. Like, don't you remember when... I honestly don't remember much about that second Thor movie. I didn't think it was very good. Okay. Do you remember when Loki was running through and he was changing forms and he became Captain America and he, like, became... Yeah, but that was, like, one... one yeah but that whole movie was, that whole movie is filled with things like that hmm. i don't really maybe i need to rewatch it i yeah. just don't remember that stuff like i'm i would be love to know your opinion on these movies if you weren't so connected with the music i would i would maybe. love to know that's that's the thing also the guardians of the galaxy is the only marvel movie with a defined soundtrack exactly that i really like and again the fact that james gunn took the time to acknowledge the soundtrack mm-hmm. and to make it a part of the story is really awesome to me personally yeah. Right. No, Just, I get that. Yeah. Uh, but no, it was a good movie. Yeah, I I really like. I think this is probably my favorite. Interesting. Definitely. Hmm. I don't know if it breaks the top three. I it definitely doesn't beat the first Guardians for me. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You're the only one I know who has this opinion. Oh, really? Yeah. You're the only person I know. I really like. Who's this like? Movie. This is the best Marvel movie. I think this is the best Marvel. Movie. That's <laughs> crazy. I think it's really fun because. For me, it it's exciting because it sets up the next things really well. Like, I'm sure as soon as, like, Infinity Wars comes yeah. out, or as soon as Volume 3 comes out, yeah. this will go rank lower on the list yeah. because it's, here's the culmination of what 2 set up. Mm-hmm. But right at, right at this moment, I think this is one is my favorite because it gets me excited for the future, 
And also, I think that movie by itself was was really great. Interesting. And I I wonder I do wonder how much of that is is the whole music thing. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. cool. Uh, yeah, that's Guardians, guys. Tell you, us what you think. Give it a five. You give it a five. I give it a five. Yeah, I give it a four. Okay, it was entertaining. Loved it. Okay. Um, let's switch <laughs> gears. Let's uh, let's introduce. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I guess we're talking about our picks of the week. Yeah. Where should we start? You want to start with the 2DS? Yeah, okay, so Nintendo, in classic Nintendo form, their handheld is coming to an end, and yeah. they're like, guess what? One more iteration! We're going to show you the one that you actually want to buy this whole time. The Game Boy Micro. No, <laughs> the DSi. <gasps> That's what this is. I never owned a DSi. I do, it's the best DS system in the world. Is it? Are you it, sure? DS, my DS Lite, pretty good. Have you felt the DSi? No. I should show you mine. All right. You'll be like, holy shit, DS games were amazing on this. It's DS Lite, though. It's not as good as the DSi. Okay, okay. But the DS Lite, though, can play DS games. It can. Or Game Boy Advance games. Game Boy Advance games. games. Right, yeah. Whereas the DSi cannot. Okay, then it sucks dick. <laughs> no, man. The DSi was where it's at. How am I going to play I... Metroid Fusion? Uh, I don't know, man. On uh, the Virtual Console for... No, I'm not buying it again. I already bought it. It's too late. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, so to turn down to 2DS, this is a set, uh, the new 2DS XL. Mm -hmm. This is basically the new 3DS XL. However, you don't have the 3D. Yeah. They took the clamshell design. Yeah. They stripped out the 3D. Yeah. The whole reason for the 2DS mm -hmm. was that it was a flat thing that kids can't break. Yeah. So they made a thing that kids can now break. Yeah. And it it honestly looks like the best 3DS. It looks hot. Yeah. Like, just design-wise, it's nice and thin. Yeah. Uh, the only color we have in North America is cool, but man, those Japanese colors yeah. look awesome. Their white and orange one looks amazing. I still want that. I want that Dragon Quest slime one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty neat. I'm all about the cream school, though. <laughs> You want that cream school? I do want that cream school. Right. Uh, no, it, it looks like a it, it looks like a great addition. If you don't, if you somehow don't own a 3ds, yeah, one forty nine was the U S was the price on that trailer. Yeah. So th the question is though, Vince, mm. are you gonna buy it? No. You sure? Yeah. One forty nine though. It doesn't do anything better than my current 3ds XL. Yes, it does. What? There's no 3D slider. And that affects me how? Because <laughs> 3D sucks. I mean, I just turned mine off. True. What if I, you accidentally hit it and you hurt your eyes? Then I turn it off. See, but you hurt your eyes. On the 2DS, you won't hurt your eyes. But the 3D doesn't... Actually, I like the 3D. <gasps> I use it all the time. There is one game that I like the 3D in. What game? It's the Bravely series. Oh, yeah. That's turning those that's towns good. into 3D that's and good. turning those... those are the, that's the only game I like the 3D in. I like the 3D in Monster Hunter. Yeah. Because it sharpens the image and I can read things better. Yeah. And, Let's get 2020 uh, vision. I don't understand. No, it's not about vision. <laughs> it's about how those things are aliased. But, uh, yeah. 2DS. I, 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 I want one? I know you're going to buy one. <laughs> I want one? You're going to buy one. I don't one. know if I'll buy one. No, you'll buy one. But I want one. Did you not buy that PSP Go? Yeah, because it was $20. You're going to buy one of these. Eventually? You're, you're going to buy one of that's these. A, that's a garbage bet. That's just like, hey, you're going to buy this thing in the future. Thanks. No, that makes me a mind reader. No, it doesn't. That makes it makes me a you... telepath, a fortune teller. It... No, <laughs> if you want to say fortune teller, sure, because they're all a bunch of crooks. But psychic. Oh, it's psychic. <laughs> you want to go there? Yeah. All right. You want to use those tarot cards? Yeah. All right. I'm a psychic. I know you're gonna buy one. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> they should make tarot cards that are made out of tarot. <laughs> That's dumb. Let's move on. <laughs> The new Call of Duty is here. It's World War II. A trailer has dropped. Yeah. And it's uh, World War II. I'm sorry, what? World War II. Uh, World War III? Uh, no, 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 no. You misheard. M1 Grand World War II. I thought they were going to the future. No, 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 no. We went to infinite space and we've now come back to World War II. So they went through, uh, they hit the, they went too close to gravity. Mm. They went through time so fast that they came back to the past. Yep. You got it. That's the timeline of Call of Duty. Shit. Um, did you guys like fighting with your uh, M1 Thompsons? On the PS2? No. I did it on the PS2 and it was and, great. And uh, you liked it there, you're going to like it here. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to... No. What, kind, what other guns do they have? They've uh, got a flamethrower. they got AKs? I'm sure they do. 
AKs are been around forever, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, MP5s, old ass MP5s. Oh, uh, I guess so. Yeah. An FAL, maybe. So I know you're excited, um, <laughs> dude. They they ran out of ideas. No, it's a renaissance. The trailer has <laughs> D-Day in it. The first thing you see is them running up the beach at Normandy. Yeah. It's a, it looks exciting, doesn't it? It looks like something I've done before. So the thing is... But like, better! I can't even be mad at it. Yeah. Because it has been so long since Call of Duty has done a World War II game. Yeah. That there is a whole generation of kids that are now like, what's World War II? Tell me all about it. Let's do it, right? Yeah. And this is now... Like, I think the thing I'm most angry about is that this trailer has made me look into a mirror and realize that I am an old man that is telling kids to get off my lawn. Oh, no. Right? Because You've I, always been an old man. No, what, are what are you talking about? about? You've always been... Nah. A, you've always held the old man opinion on everything. See, but the transparency is <laughs> where it gets me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Right? Everybody lo- knows that politicians are s- scum and money. Yeah, yeah, but when yeah. it comes to the public forefront, it's, oh. a, it's a disaster, right? So now Call of Duty has made me confront my old man feelings. Well, I'm glad you're happy about that. I'm not. Okay. Give me new shit. Stop making Call of Duties. Uh, I don't tell you. Make a new Time Splitters. Yeah, okay. Whatever, buddy. <laughs> sure. Time Splitters is great. Make a new Time yeah. Splitters. No, no. That's Call of Duty. It's World War Two, man. Yeah. I don't even know what to talk about. I don't want to talk about. A dude beats another dude with a helmet. World War Two. Cool. Even if they copied Battlefield and went tried to do their version of World War One, that mm-hmm. would have been way more interesting. But World War Two is cooler. <laughs> it's World War Two. God damn it! It's got Hitler. Hitler's, yep, yo, you want Hitler? <laughs> Sniper Elite's got your back. You can snipe Hitler in the balls and explode his testicles. Yeah, but we know that's not how it happened. It's <laughs> Call of Duty's how it happened? Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it is. God damn it. I don't know where you were fight- fighting, but in my World War II, it was Call of Duty. Listen, my grandpa didn't fight on the side of the Nazis for this <laughs> shit, okay? <laughs> <sighs> Confirmed. <laughs> what? You are a Nazi. Oh, it, by proxy, he fought on the Italian side. Confirmed. <laughs> then he came over you are to the Canada. Spawn of a Nazi. <laughs> Nazi. <laughs> I guess. Maybe maybe that's why I'm a bad person. Yeah, that makes sense actually. <laughs> it's goddamn Jews. Mm. Wait, what? Wow. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. You wow. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what else happened. Uh Dark Siders 3. That was a trailer. Yeah. Did you like the first Darksiders? I love Darksiders. I remember loving it and telling people, like, this is Zelda. And people were like, no, Zelda, Zelda. Zelda, Zelda. That's me. That was me and Okami. Yo, man, it's it's Zelda. And they're like, nah, man. Doesn't have an elf boy. Yeah. And an all-girl thing. But it came out at a time when I think Zelda was at its lowest point. Twilight Princess? Yeah. Yeah. And they I, were a little too late on the edgy version of yeah, games. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, oh, Darksiders is so good, but whatever. For as crap as Twilight Princess is to play, like those wolf segments where you gotta find all the, yeah, the light orbs or whatever, awful, those are terrible. Yep, yep. I still think it had one of the most interesting stories. Oh, it probably has the most interesting story. Yeah, it's really eh, cool. I don't With know. like Xant and stuff. Yeah, Skyward Swords is pretty cool though. Is it? Did you like fighting that one thing over and over? No, the story. Yeah, it's fine. The original, like you, dude. No, you the, are be- the original. The best Zelda story is the Impa side story in Skyward Sword. Okay, yeah, when fine. you learn sure. about Impa, sure, and yeah. then you go through the thing, you're like, "Who's this old bitch?" And yeah, then... yeah, yeah, makes sense. So yeah, Dark Siders one, I really enjoyed. I never played Dark Siders two. Neither did I. I. Should get around to it. But I think the interesting thing for Dark Siders three is that they had to rewrite. A horseman. Yeah. They couldn't figure out how to do, what was it, famine? Famine. And so they made fury. And she holds a whip. And she has a whip. Yeah. And fiery red hair. Mm. Which makes me think, like, how is this any different from war? Mm-hmm. Except that it's female. Mm. But. She's going to seduce people with her sexy body. Ooh. 
Now, you, now you're talking. She's got. I hope it's not some sort of all you know of females wrath. Oh, like <laughs> hell hath no fury, like, like a, a woman's wrath or yeah. whatever. I hope it's not that. I bet it's exactly that. Oh, I bet it's exactly oh, that. No. I bet there's a scene mm. where someone's like, like another horseman is like, you don't want to fuck with her. She's <laughs> come on. You know, oh, you know, you know that I hope saying. It's not that. You know that saying, like, well, hell hath no fury, baby. I bet there's. Ex- I bet someone says "Hell hath no fury" and then like winks at the camera. Hmm. God. Okay. Well, the game looks like Dark Siders. How many period jokes are there in this game? Or PMS jokes? One very obtuse one. One very okay. All because right. if they make one direct one, that's calls for everything. That one very obtuse one. But does the person who say it immediately die? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. It's like a dying quote. Like, wow, take a chill pill. Yeah. And then the cap date. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. No, I'm down. I'll, I'll buy this game day one. Okay. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> wow. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good to me. If you can confirm one of two's PMS joke. <laughs> okay. We'll be there. All right. It's confirmed. You heard here first. You heard here first. <laughs> and then I think the last thing we have is the Defenders. Yeah. Yo. The Defenders. It's uh, the next one. It's it's the Avengers. <laughs> but small scale. W- with a D. Uh, street level New York stuff. Yeah. It's cute. It's got a hallway fight. Sure does. So have you watched Jessica Jones? I have. What does she do? She's a detective with super strength. Oh. Lame. She's Wait. A, she's a PI. Sorry. She's a PI. So three out of four people have super strength you bet and two out of four people are basically detectives you bet well one's a lawyer but he's got to do stuff to find things i guess that's pretty much what a detective does yeah okay but he gets paid better yeah you got it okay (laughs) so i don't i honestly don't know how to feel about this show because why do they need to why do they need a diverse set of powers not even that. It's not the fact that they don't have a diverse <laughs> set of powers. A lot of the characters just overlap. Like, they're not, like, just what they do. <laughs> to be fair, they're all from New York. I guess. They all should be the same character. New York is a very diverse place. No, it's not. Or so I hear. Have you heard them all say Brooklyn? They all say it the same way. Brooklyn. Yeah. Where they go get a slice of... They all have their opinions on pizza. You got it. They all know what a New York Minute is. They got it all. What is a New York Minute, Vince? I don't know. I'm not from New York. All right, I thought you were worldly, but I guess not. No, not with New York. <laughs> tell about Italy. I know everything Oh, you, Italy. you're going to tell me about Italy. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Do you know in Italy they say pizzas and sandwiches? No, they don't. <laughs> that's some dumb Vice article that's really dumb. Oh, we're talking about this. We're t- Vice thinks that pizza is a sandwich... And you, you, Vince, of all people, (laughs) hang out with people who also think that pizza is a sandwich. Oh, I know. I'm so ashamed. These people are monsters. Yeah. The left needs to be stopped. I know. What's happened? (laughs) First they wanted separate bathrooms. Now they think sandwich is a pizza. (laughs) Or pizza is a sandwich. Yeah. It's awful. Because someone was like, do you fold your pizza when you bite into it? No. And they're like, well, isn't that a... What's that called? It's a calzone. Exactly. And they're like, is a calzone a sandwich? Oh, is a pizza pocket a sandwich? I don't know. Is it? No. It's okay. a smaller calzone. Is it, though? Yes. When you have a bun at a Chinese store, you know those buns with, like, like a meat bun? Is that a sandwich? Are you asking me <laughs> if a barbecued pork bun is a sandwich? Yeah. You're a fucking monster. I don't know. <laughs> No. I want to know. It's not. It's its own thing. Because <laughs> that's like a pizza pocket, right? No, a sandwich is two pieces of bread on top of each other. But what if I sealed it with another piece of bread? Then it's no longer a sandwich. What would you call that? You'd call it what it's called. <laughs> Which is? A calzone. But that, that, or a bun. That ter- but is but a bun is used to make sandwiches like a McDonald's, right? You got a bun from the top and the bottom. Yeah. Yo, English is stupid. <laughs> there, there, and there. <laughs> Like, all right, all right. There you go. I I'm not taking a side. I'm just saying this is like people who call a gif a jif. 
I'm just laying out all the facts. And I want to slap them. I'm laying out all the facts so the audience can decide for themselves. No, they can't decide for <laughs> themselves, all right? The audience is dumb. <laughs> the double decker at KFC where they have two pieces of chicken that sandwich a piece of bread. Is that a sandwich? No. What is that? It's a monstrosity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a case of scientists saying, we could do this. Mm. Rather, they should be asking... Should we do this? Okay. And they didn't ask that question. I'm just making sure. Is a taco a sandwich? Is a burrito a sandwich? It's pretty close, isn't it, huh? No, it's not, because it's <laughs> one piece. So you're saying a hot dog is a sandwich. Because you know when you op- when you cut the hot dog bun and it splits, but you put your hot dog in Listen, anyway? That's a sandwich. I will, I will concede to hot dogs being a type of sandwich. Okay. If you want to call it a hot dog sandwich, more power to you, you're going to get weird looks. <laughs> but go for it. Because that fits the description of a sandwich. Mm, okay. Actually, no, it doesn't. Mm. Because when you cut a hot dog bun, mm. it's still connected at the bottom. Have you ever eaten a hot dog with two separated buns? Yes, all the time. Why? Are you a monster? No, because I cut too deep and then the bread splits. <laughs> Some 41 did, you were in too deep. <laughs> yeah. And then it splits, and then I'm like, well, shit, now what? So the then fa- I have to turn it sideways like a sandwich, like a sub. If, okay, caveat, if you split your hot dog bun in half, and it's two separate pieces, and then you put it on a hot dog, yeah. it is then a hot dog sandwich. Sure. If you are able to cut bread like a normal person, uh-huh. and you know, you don't suck. Yeah. Then it's a hot dog. It's just a regular. So what hot you're dog. telling me is that a hot dog can and cannot be a sandwich. It is simultaneously Schrodinger sandwich. <laughs> wow! <laughs> it is both a sandwich and not a sandwich. This is blowing my mind here. Uh, let's move on. If you put a piece of hot dog bun in a box with a knife and you close the box, is it a sandwich? <laughs> Fuck! I don't know, man. <laughs> Or is it both at the same time? It's it's both and neither is what it is. There you go. Jesus. What else do we got on here? Nothing. Is that it? Is that it? I think that was all our picks. All right, let's move on. Let's you want to talk about Hot Wheels tracks. Uh, No, but that's a pretty cool sick DLC thing. Yeah. Uh, Okay. um, My week. Pretty (laughs) simple. Go for it. I watched 13 Reasons Why. Do you want to kill yourself now? No. Okay. It's very graphic, though. Is it when she commits su- when she actually does the suiciding? She go. Did she go across the street or down the road? She goes uh, down the road. Down the results go for, good for her. Yes, twice committed. Very. It's. I I would love to know how they filmed it because it's just like a bag that explodes. It's your veins, man. Yeah, it's a uh, it, it's a fun one. It doesn't sound like it. So, like, what's it actually about? Because I actually have no clue what this Okay, so there's a girl. She moves to a new uh, neighborhood and goes to new high school. And she commits suicide. Yeah. And this show is basically 13 reasons. Of, she she makes 13 reasons why she wanted to end her life. Okay. Each of these reasons are re- her recording a, a narration on a cassette tape. Okay. Was this in the 80s? No, it's modern day. The reason she puts it on cassette tape is so that you can't easily access it through the internet. You Uh-oh. can't easily copy it. It's uh, because uh, the the setup of the show is there's 13 people that she makes. A re- like Each person has a reason for who contributed to like... Oh, why she wanted to end it. Yeah. Okay. And, and you could infer that as a, a form of bullying or whatnot or some, something clearly happened with this other person. Yeah. And so she makes each tape about this and they get... Uh, an increasing success of severity. So, like the person at number thirteen, is is the worst. Is the, the worst, worst compared to the person at one. Okay. Each episode is a is a tape that's being played. The way it works out is you you get to a a character whose turn it is, is to receive these tapes because the way she's done it is the tapes go out to oh she committed it already yeah and then in her will <laughs> like no she has a friend she she leaves a note with a friend and then. He has instructions, okay. but by the time he gets this thing, she's already done. She's the done, and he and he and just he, has the instructions, and he follows through. Okay. So you come up the where you come in the story is one of the people. I'm not going to say which one. 
it's their turn to have the tapes and they're listening. Oh, okay. And so they go through like episode one is them listening to tape one and they're going through their day. But at the same time, it's cut with flashbacks of what this tape is referencing. Oh, okay. So it's really cool how it's done. It, uh, it gets a very seat deep and serious, uh, I guess, issues that you would face in high school. Everything from like, you know, bullying. Yes. Standard level bullying yeah. to, uh, things only girls would experience. Okay. Like harassment from dudes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't um, know. I experience that all the time. Did you get sexual harassment from dudes? All the time. Okay. Well, <laughs> I guess I can't relate to that, but Listen, you can. My milkshake brings all the boys. Wow. Out, all right. <laughs> you went. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, if you if you had a very bad experience with high school, or if like you're someone who does not want to like relive high school, maybe don't watch this. So you're telling me I shouldn't <laughs> watch this show? I don't know. I think you'll be fine. I think okay. you're I think you're detached enough. But let's say you're 19. Oh, like I just came off it. Yeah, All right. Like you just came off like a bad four years of high school. Maybe don't watch. Hold this. on, hold off. Put it in the list. Let's save it for later. If you're mentally unstable because of this, I would I would leave it. Okay, nope. so the interesting thing about this show is my friend is a teacher. Yeah. Right, she teaches at an elementary school. Mm-hmm. And when this show came out, the whole school had to have a meeting about it. They had to say, like, hey, um, the board has decided that you cannot outwardly talk about this show to kids unless one of the kids brings it up to you. Yeah. Then at that point, you are allowed to openly discuss what they want to discuss. Yeah. Uh, like, so that was a kind of a thing where... Uh, you remember remember the interview when North Korea is like, don't release this movie or we'll fuck you up. Yes. And it made me just want to watch it more. Yeah. It, it's kind of what happened there. Uh, like, I heard that story. It's like, wow, I really want to watch this show now. Yeah. I It's interesting why they would say that. Because, I mean, I feel like... I think everybody should be more aware of these types of things that go on. Mm. You know, I don't know why you, you'd want to hide that as a school board. For uh, I think for the board, like from a school perspective, it's less that... The school would like to talk about it because I'm sure they would to educate the children. It's more of a, hey, my kid went home and told my mom that the teacher talked to me about suicide. Uh, right. Uh, it's keeping it's keeping parents in the loop. Yeah. And and not having these that surprises of like, sense. hey, why but, why is the teacher telling my kid to kill himself? And it's like, yeah. no one, he's not. It's a TV show. It's, yeah. yeah. It does a great job at like show. You know how when you, everyone's a teenager at some point and you hide stuff from your parents. It does mm-hmm. a great job at depicting that. Dude, adults hide stuff from their parents. Exactly. So like it, 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 it does a really good job at that. It, it, it has this really great, uh, I guess, outlook of, I guess, modern high school. Okay. Like there are segregated groups, but that does not mean they're, they're exclusive to one another. Like they still interact with, uh, like the jocks still talk to the nerds. Okay, and it's not like in this sort of demeaning way. Sometimes it's just like a, hey, like, yeah, Are you studying for finals? Yeah, like, like, and it, and it feels very real. Um, See, I want to know. So I, I keep trying to talk to my little cousins yeah. about like because a couple of them are in high school yeah. now. I'm like, what is modern high school like? Yeah. And of course they're teenagers, so they're like, oh my god, shut up! I just yeah. want to listen to ASAP Rocky or something. Oh, like, I don't there know. You go. Yeah. But, you know, it does it does a good job at doing that. Um, they get into all these different situations. Uh, like high school, there's a huge supporting cast, and that sometimes works to the benefit of the story. Okay. Or it's sometimes like, well, how did they figure? How did how do we get from this to point A to point B? And it's like, oh, well, there's this other character who's in high school at the same time who uh, you've never met before, but they exist within the school. They exist, and they already have this relationship with the uh, character okay and so at those points it's kind of just like i don't know how i feel about that because it's like no that's life that does happen but but i feel like it's just it's super almost convenient. too convenient all right so but i'm not gonna uh pin it for that the thing i'll say is the ending is where i i don't know how i feel about it uh, i loved all the episodes right up into the last half hour do you know when sh- stories end with a bit of ambiguity to them yeah and you're like made to think about did, did the dreidel yeah. wobble or did it spin? And I like that. I, I have no problem with that. But it's high school and there's like 20 different story threads and they all end like that. And, and so you're just kind of like, like there. it's implied that like sometimes this happens, but it's not confirmed. And so you're just kind of like, is everything just an ambiguity and a setup for a sequel? So I wonder if, okay, is is it trying to? Is it feel like more? It's setting up like for a sequel, or is it trying to set up as 
maybe the person who ended their life, their problems aren't actually as severe as the person thinks it is. Or, because uh, I know a lot of the times with... No, no, that's not it. That's is there, not it. Like, so the things are actually legit and it's just... Yeah. Okay. It's just that the characters we're dealing with now, like the decisions they've made in regards to this this girl's suicide, um, are they justified? And you, But you don't get to see the, re- the resolution of how that happens. Okay. And uh, the show literally ends with them driving into the sunset. Gross. Yeah. Like off the cliff? Like off a of Grand Canyon? Maybe or? towards the cliff. <laughs> uh, but no, I think it's really good. I think it's worth watching just for the story to get through it. The ending, you know what? It's ambiguous, but I guess... How uh, how many episodes is Or sorry, it's 13 episodes, but how long are the episodes? An hour. Okay. Some are less than that. I, th- I think I got something to watch now when... Uh... I'm trying to put all those fucking stickers on my Gundam kit. Finally, <laughs> yeah, no, it's a uh, it's a good watch. It was really addicting. I watched it over the weekend. It was, uh, it was good. Okay, really? yeah, that was it for my week. Really, nothing new. I it. mean, I play I play Heroes of the Storm. Tell me all about it. It's MOBA. I heard you level up all together as a unit. I still don't really know what I'm doing. Okay, maybe save it for when you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like Diablo. She's she slash she. It's pretty cool. Yeah, he's like Reinhardt. Oh. But without the shield. Look at you talking about MOBAs. Man. I'm so proud. Dude's got a charge. I'm so proud. And then he has a suplex. And then he has an AoE fire strike. This guy sounds great. Yeah, man. He's got this one two combo that's all about risk reward. You get caught, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Have you played against people or just bots? Oh, people. Oh, we yeah. have to play people. Oh, you have to play we people. We have. Because oh, I got that Diva skin, you know? Oh, yeah, true. Got that Officer Diva reporting for duty. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's my week. Nice. I uh I went to Cuba. I heard. Yeah, I went to Cuba for for a week. I heard that place has sunshine and rainbows. I heard that place has a lot of sunshine. They were not wrong. That oh. place is hot. Uh, so me being the the palest person I know. Yeah. Um, I got a sunburn in the shade. Nice. So I got a great story about that. Yeah. Which is one day I went to the beach and I decided I'm not gonna go swim. <sighs> so I'm gonna put a shirt on. I put some shorts on. Uh, uh... I'm gonna put on some sunscreen on my arms up to where my shirt cuts off. Yeah. I'm gonna put some sunscreen on my legs up to where my pants cut off and stuff. It'll be fine. I know where this is going. And so I get to the beach. I'm laying down in the shade reading, and my parents are like, "Hey, why don't you take your shirt off? It's hot. I bet you're hot." I'm like, "I am hot. It's, you're correct." Mm. And they're like, well, you're in the shade. Take it off. I'm like, but I'll get burned. And they're like, you're in the shade. Mm. And I was like, fair point. So I took off my shirt. Mm. About an hour later, put my shirt back on. Mm. Everything fine. Mm. Go home at night. Got sunburned. Wow. I have a reverse farmer's tan. (laughs) I got a reverse farmer's burn. (laughs) How do you do that? I told you. You put on sunscreen up to the sleeves. And then you take your shirt off in the sun, apparently. (laughs) <laughs> all those reflective uv rays exactly i don't know what it was that canopy did nothing i got a reverse farmer's burn oh i'm glad you did it was it's pretty great <laughs> it was both painful and hilarious at the wow. same time uh but on the trip i went to havana havana Havana, and which i learned they spell habana with a b oh wow it's pretty interesting uh but man there are parts of that country that are just not, there's absolutely nothing. And then there's, here's a bunch of architecture from the 1800s. Mm. And it, it's, it's like living, it's almost like a museum. Like if Disneyland had created like here, come visit, come visit all these buildings from the 1800s. Like come to this theme park. Mm. Like that's kind of what it feels like, but it's an actual city that people live in. Damn. Uh, all the rumors about them having car, like specifically just Cadillacs from the 1950s, all true. Mm-hmm. Could I've never seen more of those cars in my life. Uh, and like in Fast and the Furious, I, it was confirmed that people will do whatever it takes to keep those cars running. Yep. Uh, the th- I think the one of the most interesting facts I learned about Cuba is, so it's a, what's it called? What's that thing? Uh, What's that government type called? Uh, Socialist not... society? Okay, sure. Oh, communist. Oh, communist. Yeah, it's a communist society. Uh, and so they have this thing where you can go to school. You go to school, right? You got to go to school. Sure. When you graduate high school, you you can take college slash university entrance exams. To get in? Yeah. To get in. And uh, if you fail it twice, 
the government says you're dumb and you can't go to university. <laughs> Damn. So that's what the tour guide told us. Uh, I don't know if like there's a certain amount of time when you can retake those tests, but the way he said it sounded pretty final. Like you got two chances to pass this test, and if you don't pass it, the government says you're dumb and doesn't let you go to university. Wow. Which is like on one hand super streamlined, and like hey, like you're just getting people to not waste their time and to go contribute to society. On the other hand. It sounds shitty because, like, hey, this person maybe later might actually gain that knowledge yeah. and want to go back. So I, I don't, I didn't look into it. I don't know if there was more than that, but it was pretty interesting. Hmm. Uh, but our our dollar sucks dick. So Canada's dollar sucks dick. And I also learned that the there's a two types of Cuban pesos. Mm. There is one for the locals, mm. and there is one for the foreigners. Oh, yes. So and yours is worth a lot more. Oh, ours is worth a lot more, but our dollar sucks. Yeah. So the equivalent exchange rate is like if Canadian money tried to exchange over to American money. Uh -huh. So it's like every, for every Canadian dollar we trade in, it's worth like 72 cents in yeah. Cuban pesos. And it's not great. Yeah. Kind of got kind of got wrecked. But it was an all-inclusive resort. It was pretty fun. There was a there was a lot of stuff to do. It's like the the beach was the nicest beach I've ever seen in my fucking life. Mm -hmm. It was like they photoshopped real life. Mm -hmm. Everything was super blue, really salty. <laughs> yeah, did you know the ocean salty? Yeah, yeah, it's super salty. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like yeah, it was it was just a really fun trip. But on my trip, I decided to not bring any video games. Amazing. I brought no handhelds. I brought no consoles. That's correct. I didn't bring my laptop. Okay. I brought books. Book about regular ass books, you know the things with paper and you flip them and you read it. Never heard of them. Okay, well, before your time, okay, books kind of nuts. Are they like audio books? Kind of, but you have to read them yourself. What? Yeah. So you know how like who someone does is, that? You know how like in the audio book someone is reading to you. Yeah. You have to read it yourself. Garbage. Not not so much. So I I finished uh two and a half books. Okay, tell me. I finished uh a field guide to lies. So this book is uh. Man, I really should have wrote down the authors to all these books. Oh, what kind of book is it? Uh, it is a. It is more of a. It's not a story book. It's a. It's more of a like a. Here's helpful. <laughs> it's not a story book. It's not, yeah, it doesn't have a sick story to it. It's uh. Here's here's some sick hot tips to live your life. Okay. And it's by this Ontario professor, um, who who he's a psychology professor at, at something McGill. It's a university or college I've heard. McGill. Yeah, you know. Yeah, is it McGill University? Yeah. Is that just what it's called? I'm yeah. just talking about the book company McGill. No, 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 McGill University. He works for McGill University. Uh, I think he's the head of psychology over there. Yeah, and he's talking about critical thinking in a digital age, in an age with so much information. How do you parse out bad information? You don't. You take it all in. No. So the thing pretty much is you can't. Oh, but okay. you can think, you can have these, like, uh, you can look at information in a more educated way uh -huh. to make decisions for yourself. Interesting. So uh, the first chapter talks about numbers. So, like, everybody thinks that math is absolute, right? When you see when you see a graph, when you, see, you assume that the numbers are crunched and they're all accurate. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you got to remember that humans count those numbers, right? Numbers may not lie, but... Humans make mistakes. Yeah. Also, humans um, try and sway numbers to make them look more favorable. Yeah. So an example for this was um, Apple. Apple comes out with reports to stockholders. And normally what they want to do is tell you that from last quarter or last year, we have sold more iPhones this year mm -hmm. or this quarter. Mm -hmm. Right? But when they haven't, they can change up a graph. Yep. So instead of showing uh, actual units of like per quarter or per year, they'll show total cumulative sold units. So visually, you still have a line that is trending upwards. Mm -hmm. When in reality, Apple may have sold less products this yep. year than last year. Mm -hmm. um, and other things like double uh, y-axis bar graphs mm -hmm. and, and, and the plotted line graphs and yep. stuff. And stuff like that. It's it's really interesting. Like some of the stuff I knew before just from school. Uh, but the way he breaks it down, I feel that anybody could learn from that book. And even if you think that you're like bad at math, uh, he breaks it down in a way where you will be uh, more educated 
and have a better knowledge and what to look out for by reading this book. Right. Right. And so it goes through numbers. It goes through news stations. It goes through words, like how people try and trick you with their vocabulary and yeah. stuff. I do that all the time. You do? It's dude, but I can't shit. I do the math. I do the graph thing all the time too. What? What do you? What? What graph thing? Uh, where I have to, I have to fudge the numbers to make it look like I. Some there was a. I had a couple like, um, what do you call it? Accounting projects. Okay. And like I was trying to prove a point to someone, so I was like, "Fuck, I'm wrong." Like I looked at like. I, oh no! I looked at the data. And I'm like, oh no, they're in the right. So I made the graph, and I just, I just adjusted the tables and the the space and that the we're axes, measuring yeah and i was like this looks like i'm right and oh you suck i do that's why i'm in business <laughs> <laughs> you suck yeah uh but yeah so that that was the thing like just adjusting graphs adjusting tables adjusting mm-hmm. timelines yeah uh, or just seeing like oh uh what was the one thing oh 90 percent of burglaries are stopped if you own an alarm system yeah right or if you own a, a an internal like video recording system yeah. but the thing is is like 10% of burglaries are probably solved anyways, yeah. right? It's just that 90% of that 10% yeah. was aided by video surveillance mm-hmm. and it helped, mm-hmm. right? So it's not it's not actually 90% of all burglaries. It's 90% of that 10%. Exactly. Right? And so it, it's teaching you how to work around advertising mumbo jumbo and mm-hmm. and people trying to trick you it's a really interesting book it's it's pretty great and he actually has some personal experiences where he uses his own teachings like he had one about his dog dying yeah like his dog had a tumor and they didn't know what to do and so he broke down lo- like logical thinking into mm-hmm. figuring out what was best for him and his dog yeah right mm-hmm. it was it's it's a really great book uh field guide to lies if you're interested cool uh the other one is the next two are just like Kind of just ancient classics. So I read Dante's Inferno. Oh, this is a storybook. This is a storybook. Oh, okay. I read it. I read it in. Uh, <laughs> this might have been a mistake. So there are of these old stories. There are the originals, which are in um, original poem pose and stuff like that. Yeah. Very old timey writing, and there are tr- translations yeah. which take those poems, translate them into modern day English, mm. so you have an easier time following the story. Yeah. I read Dante's Inferno in the original poem form. Yeah. And hot damn is that a hard read. Yeah. Because I don't read poetry, man. It's uh my books uh, specifically though had at the end of the chap each chapter, yeah, it had a little glossary where you can be like, oh, line thing, line twenty when he said this, uh, this is what they meant. Right. Oh. So if you were lost on certain things or what's who certain characters were, yeah. Um you, they caught you up. Okay. But pretty much this is the story of uh, Dante, he is a poet. Yeah. And he meets pretty much he's he's lost in a forest. He doesn't know what he got there. There's a bunch of weird shit happening in this forest. And he meets up with another ancient poet, like a great poet from his past that yeah. he's never met. It's called Virgil. Yep. And Virgil uh is like, "Hey, I see you have come to where the afterlife comes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what you're doing here, but you need to escape and you can't go back the way you came. So we're going to go through hell and I'm going to be your guide. And it is Dante being led by Virgil through all the different rings of hell. Why people are there. Who is there? Um, this book is called a divine comedy, mm-hmm. but I found nothing funny about it. <laughs> it's actually very serious. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe the comedy was lost on me cause I don't get the poem portion mm-hmm. of it. Uh, but yo, so like hell doesn't, hell accepts everybody. Hell is like Visa. It's accepted everywhere. It's accepted, okay. Right? Just everyone, you you breathe wrong. Yeah. You're going to hell. Yeah. Right? You look at someone in the wrong way. You're, you're going to hell. And there's different levels to hell. And so the hell you think of that is um, like hot, boiling, like yeah. things poking you with pitchforks. That's just the surface. That's the uh, first level. Um, they actually cross through purg- purgatory too, which is interesting. Oh, I thought their de- depiction of purgatory was pretty cool because purgatory is for people who not necessarily go against the faith, but they don't believe in the faith. Ah, uh, right. Or they believe in a faith, but maybe not the the Roman Catholic faith. Mm. Right. So they still are spiritual, but they didn't go all the way. They didn't mm-hmm. accept the Lord and Savior, your God. Um, let me tell you about our Lord and Savior. No. <laughs> and this podcast. 
Um, and so what there, what purgatory is, is actually, uh, it's kind of a, a meh state, right? Uh, Virgil says to Dante, the only crime they have for not having more in purgatory is their own imagination. Uh... Because they only thought that, like, it's pretty much nothing. Like, once you, once you die, there's nothing, right? Yeah. So, God said, all right, if they think there's nothing, here's nothing. I'm going to give them what they imagine. Yeah. Right? And so, purgatory is filled with people and philosophers and great thinkers and stuff. But they're just fucking bored out of their minds. You can hear sighs, echoes from miles away. Just hmm. like everyone's like, oh, they're very content. Right? But there's no, uh, there's no great reward and there's no great punishment. Mm -hmm. It's just it's strictly neutral. Mm -hmm. And then you get into hell. And hell has a series of rings and a series of levels. And again, pitchforky kind of hell, get burned. That's regular hell. But as you get deeper, the torture gets more elaborate. Um, I think for thieves, what it was, if you... Uh... So in Roman Catholic law, your property was an extension of yourself. <clears throat> so yep. if, I, if I stole a thing from you, it's like I personally harmed you. Okay. So... Uh, thieves were pretty, pretty down there in the in the lower echelons. Like they were being punished pretty bad. Yeah. What they had to suffer was their arms were tied behind their backs by snakes. Oh. Right, because they're they're snakes, yeah. and also they can't use their hands because their hands were used for thieving. Right. Right. And they are running around in this open field, being chased by other snakes, which bite them. And when they bite them, it sets them on fire internally. And burns them into an ash. Bones Whoa. and everything. Whoa. Immediately after being turned into ash, mm -hmm. you regenerate. <laughs> and experience it all over again for all of eternity. Wow. Yeah. Uh, other ones are like blasphemers against the church, like spoken word. Um, they were sentenced to an area with great demons who had yeah. swords. And they would cut out your tongues. And then cut you into pieces. And you'd feel everything. And then once you couldn't like once your body couldn't handle it again regeneration you gotta feel it all over again Ooh. uh i think the worst that had it were uh was probably judas judas is one of the the big three he he betrayed jesus yeah at, at the end of the bible um there's also brutus and it was caesar's two right hand man brutus and someone else uh, i forget their names oh yeah i know uh but those three are stuck in satan's mouth Forever oh. to be chewed on. Oh. Yeah. Just forever. Ooh. That's gross. <laughs> it sucks. Right? And uh so actually the 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 farther in you go into hell, the, the colder it gets. Mm -hmm. It becomes this tundra, uh, which is more painful than fire, they say. Yeah. And at the very bottom in the very center is Satan. Okay. Satan is chilling there, frozen in a lake, constantly beating his wings, trying to escape. From the lake oh from being frozen but the thing is is that the wind pressure from his wings is freezing the lake colder and colder I see. and colder and because he is a being of madness mm -hmm. and and no logical or rational thought yeah. he mm. just keeps trying i see right and also the the coldness makes other people suffer around there and it's very bleak this story it's like hell is no joke yeah. according to dante uh, and, but it was it was a really interesting read. I really uh, want to go through the other two books, which kind of go actually more into purgatory and mm -hmm. also into heaven to tell you what heaven's about. Mm. So it's a three part series. Did you play the game? I did not play Dante's Inferno. Mm. Uh, Dante's Inferno, I think, simplified the story. It's like your wife gets taken. Uh, the game, sorry, Dante's Inferno. Yeah. Your wife gets taken and you got to go down into the beat scene to save her soul or something. Yeah. But in this one, uh, the great beauty is just a spirit you find. And he, uh. he is uh, he, he's afraid to enter, but the great spirit gives her him words of courage to continue. I see. Right. Uh, so she plays a lesser role. Okay. But it was, it was pretty cool. Neat. And uh, the last one is The Odyssey. You read the uh, you brought I'm, the Odyssey. I'm reading the Odyssey. Okay. This one is a translated version, ah. so it's translated into to more plain English. Yeah. Um, hot damn! If you thought Persona Five <laughs> was verbose, yeah. Jesus Christ! This story, this whole story is supposed to be about Odysseus, yeah, uh, a great uh, Trojan warrior. He's coming back from the Great Trojan War. 
<laughs> and it's his 10 year journey to from the Trojan War back to his wife. Yeah. Right? Defeating, like going across gods, defying all odds. It's a great grand adventure. I still fucking haven't gotten past his son's backstory. His son is like trapped in a slave boat. And they're like, oh, if you can prove that your dad's still alive. And they keep talking up his dad like he's fucking hot shit. Like <laughs> he's super sexy. Uh, great warrior, probably got a big dick. Like, he's just baller, right? <laughs> Odysseus is, is killing it on every front. And he's the, he's even the talk of gods. Like, even Zeus is like, yo, Odysseus is fucking dope, right? <laughs> if it were up to me, I'd just bring him home on a bolt of lightning. It'd be great. But Poseidon fucking hates him. Uh, right? Poseidon hates this motherfucker, yeah. right? And I still haven't gotten past the story of, <laughs> yo, check out how great Odysseus is. Yo, Odysseus' son, why do you suck? Like, why aren't you as good as your dad? Right? It's, Aww. oh my god, it's the slowest moving story in the world. Uh, but I just, I've been promised great things, so I want to continue. <laughs> I've been promised battles with gods and medusas and cyclopses. Good or luck. Cyclops Eye, I guess. Good luck. It's, man, hot damn. Yeah, so I've learned ancient Greek tragedies slash adventures. Very verbose. Mm. Like, whew. That's how they talked. I guess. Yeah. I guess it is, because everyone wants to fuck everybody. Everyone wants to betray everybody because they're fucking everybody. Yeah. And then also, uh, no, and no one gets along. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds about right. Like what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> Just I want to I want to get to the story already. Get reading. I will. I I <laughs> guess I guess that's the only option I have. Yeah. Uh, I guess the other things I did is when I came back, I played more Persona Five. Yep. I'm at sixty hours. Cool. I just beat, I believe, the fifth dungeon. I think I have all the party members now. <coughs> okay. Uh, unless there's like another one, like a secret one I don't know of. But the game is finally moving at a steady clip. There's no more tutorials. What? 60 hours in, there's no more... Get out. Yeah. What? Finally. Oh, my right. God. <laughs> uh, I'm well, never going to beat this well, game. Well, I guess technically there are tutorials because you're... If you level up confidants late, they give you new skills. Okay. Which then they give you two blocks of text to explain to you. Yeah. Right? But it's never just like, hey, you can't do this thing until I tell you all about it. Hey, 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 yeah, okay. hey, hey. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, still though, motherfucking Mona yeah. is deciding when I go to bed <laughs> and I hate it. I hate it so much. Like I feel like date wise, I feel like I'm near the end of a persona game. Yeah. Um, even though apparently I'm all, like time wise, I'm only 50% because yeah. they said it's like 120 hours. Yeah. But a lot of my social stats, like my knowledge and stuff are almost maxed. Everything's at four instead of five. Yeah. I have a lot of rank 10 social links. Yeah. It feels like I'm nearing an end. And every single time this motherfucking cat tells me to go to sleep, yeah. I just want to punch it. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. It's so annoying. Yeah. Because uh, there are certain days where um, you're like, there's a big story thing. Yeah. Right. And it's like, hey, um, I want to meet in the evening. Yeah. Right. But for some reason, even though there's the story thing is in the evening, it cuts out your afternoon after school time and it goes straight to the evening. Yeah. And then after you have your big story point, you can't go out in the evening because you had your thing and it's like, Hey, just sleep. You're really tired. And yeah. it's like, no, I'm not. Let me go talk to the old guy that owns the gun <laughs> shop. Like hot damn. Uh, but it's, it's still good. I'm getting more and better fusion options and fusions. Yeah. Uh, and the whole metaverse thing is is coming into its own. Yeah. So it's it's, it's getting there. Good. It's getting there. Uh, and then I played the newest hotness. Uh oh. Guess guess what the new hotness is. New hotness. Uh. uh Pokemon Shuffle. No. It's actually old hotness. I lied to you. Oh. It's actually not hot at all. It's just old. Oh God. So it's called Vampire Night. And oh. It's, Vampire, but night is spelled like the night, like N I G H T. It is a PS2 light gun game. Oh. You are two dudes. You go and fight vampires by shooting them. They have health bars and weak points. And it's it's an on-rails gun con game. Wow. 
The reason I bring this game up yep. is because it has mwah, the best voice acting. And by best, I mean worst voice acting. Wow. I have played in a game in a long time. Uh, and every cutscene of poorly timed line deliveries and poor line deliveries are making me laugh the whole way through. That's good. Uh, good good news for all you gun con owners. If you don't own a gun con 2, yes. supports the gun con 1. Wow. So don't worry about it. You don't got to buy the new gun con. You don't got to buy that 4 gen old, 2 gen old gun wow. con. You just got to have gun con 1. It's okay. Right? Uh, I just, I have this weird, um, like, weakness for light gun games. Mm -hmm. I really like them. Uh, like House of the Dead, Time mm -hmm. Crisis, all that stuff. And when they have terrible voice acting, all the better. I, I really recommend you guys look up some some Vampire Night voice acting clips. Like, they're just fucking amazing. I bet. And by amazing, I mean bad. Great. Yeah. There's a, there's really no gimmicks to it. Um, unlike in, You know, like in Time Crisis, like you just shoot a dude and he's dead? Yeah. In this one, they got life bars and the, each enemy has a different weak point so uh, either you can unload on their armor and chip them down or you can just try and aim for their weak point uh within the game within the levels there are humans that are have like a weird eyeball glob on top of them and if you shoot the glob you save them and they become human but if you shoot them it powers up like the glob and they become vampires and then you lose your extra points i see because sometimes the civilians give you like life ups and stuff yeah but there's no there's no there's only a pistol uh, you got to shoot outside of the screen to reload. Oh, that's fun. And, or actually, you can, in the PS2 version, you can use the back of the gun con. There's like a D-pad on it. That's not fun. So you can cheat. Yeah. Right? You can pretty much have a machine gun. Like, you just shoot and then yeah. are constantly reloading at the same yeah. time. But that's no fun. Right? A first playthrough, I almost beat it. <laughs> I got, it, they give you four credits to try and get through the whole game. I got to the second, like, midway through the second last stage. Hmm. Um, hmm. The, the bosses are cool. It's all figure out their gimmick, hit their weak points. If you ever played House of the Dead, uh, it's the thing where you hit their weak point and there's a little bar underneath their big life bar. I see. And you have to diminish the little bar to cancel their attack and do damage to okay. them. Oh, okay. So it's like that. It's like House of the Dead. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fun. It's a light gun game. Hmm. I really like light gun games. We know this. It has been confirmed. There you go. Hmm. Next week, I'll talk about Time Crisis 1. Wow, my God. Uh, but that was everything? Yeah, that was, that was pretty much everything. I, I talked about League before. Yeah. New League update came out. Actually made some of my favorite heroes to play better. And one of them, super OP. Um, you happy about that? I'm very happy about that. Except for the fact that she gets banned every game now. <laughs> I have heard about this banning, yes. Yes, yeah, so the banning happens. Yeah. Have, is banning is ban happening in HOTS? Can yeah, I, I can't play Lucio. Oh. <laughs> Why is Lucio really good in HOTS? He's amazing. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, the, the new mid season update came out. This is their, their chance or in their words, their chance to roll out some big changes that would normally be saved for preseason. Mm -hmm. Right. So they kind of changed up yeah. everything. Uh, a lot of quality of life stuff where, um, they have given new stats to, um, pretty much help out roles that don't really get acknowledged that much. Mm -hmm. So supports, uh, now have a stat called a uh, award ranking. Like, the better wards and the more wards you get out, the higher ranking you get. And yeah. It shows your team that you contributed. <clears throat> yeah. Um, they have better tracking of active items. So there's one item called the Locket of Iron Solari. Yeah. And while your team is near you, if you activate it, they all get a shield. And then now that shield tracks how much damage you've mitigated and shows that to your teammates and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> and also, they've, they've redone the borders on active items to kind of just remind you, hey, you have these items. Use them. Stuff like that. But the big thing are, are two of the champions I play are Sijuani and Zack. Zack is the one that got a minor update. He's he's a bit better. He got a new move where before he had a move where he would stretch out his arms. He, he's a ball of goo. Mm -hmm. This is and the more health he has, the bigger he gets. Mm -hmm. He had a arm. He had a thing where he stretches out his arms, and if he hits you, you get slowed. So now he has um, a move where instead of that, it's he shoots out one arm, and if it hits someone, it slows them and it grabs them with one arm ah. and it stays there and while you're walking around if you auto attack someone with your other arm yes. you grab them and smash them together okay and it stuns them okay uh on top of all of his other crowd control stuff sounds like fun it is really fun but my favorite champion so who usually 
sucks dick because she has really slow clear speed. And pretty much she, she's the champion, I told you, where she sets up the plays. She sets up the pins. But she doesn't knock someone else. So yeah, yeah. Right. now she has more options to set up pins uh-huh. and also some ability of her own to knock down some of the weaker ones. Oh. So like her problem was like she could never confirm. Like you can't. Yeah, you, you could set up everything but yeah. if your team doesn't follow through then you just wasted your ult yeah. so she's right. a joke rat i guess yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so her her thing is like she she rides a boar she has a flail okay she hits people with ice so uh interesting move set you can run into someone with your boar knocks them up stops them in their tracks yeah. hit them with stuff yeah uh her other move used to be you slam your bola on the ground and yeah. you spin it around yeah. you and you just hit everybody in an area. Yeah. But now it's more of um, more of an activated ability. You do a wide swipe and then a single smash. So that does more damage uh, and it adds <clears throat> your passive, which is a norm. What it used to be is it's called Frostbite. I think it was called Frostbite. Um, when you attack someone with your skill or with your with any of your skills, they get a frost on them. And you can activate that to shatter it doing damage, and then slowing them really severely. Okay. The thing is now is that when you're in range of an allied champion, the allied champion can now apply that frost. So the thing that makes oh, her... Oh, I see what you're saying. So the thing that makes her really good now is instead of having regular frost, she builds up stacks every time someone attacks them. Yeah. And when it's max, instead of just slowing them down, it fucking freezes them solid and stuns them. Ah. Uh. Right? So you can be in the lane, and it's like, okay, I'm going to go gank, but he's on the other side. Just, I'm near you, just fucking hit him. Yeah. And then they put all, your uh, ally right. puts all the stacks on him. You just activate the ability, freeze it, and then just CC train. Oh, that sounds right? like fun. So she really got a huge update, and it's, it's helping her out a bunch. Enough to where it's getting banned a lot. Cool. Yeah. Cool. But it's fun. Neat. It's good stuff. Neat. Awesome. Anything else? That's everything? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, we've come to that part of the show where we talk about Common Rider. It's pretty actually very simple because there's two episodes we're going to talk about, but the first one actually doesn't matter because you know that whole poppy arc of her being evil? It ended. Yeah, she's 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 good and clean. What? Oh, she got her data cleaned. Yes, pretty much. However, it ended on a very, very interesting moment where they confirmed something for everyone. The thing that we knew all along. Yes. It turns out that Paradox is M's Bugster. Dun, dun, dun. Man, who knew? That's so crazy. I feel like we've been saying this for the We've past. been saying this since the day one. Yeah, <laughs> we have. So that's confirmed. And in the second episode, um, hijinks ensue. And he uses it, and he baits M into a fight. To reprogram him. To, re- to get himself reprogrammed as a human. Yeah, and he's like, well, when you reprogrammed me, you put human code into me. So Paradox is now human. Check this shit out. Yeah. I can use the driver. And he uses the driver. Get the level 99. Yeah. He he uses the gamer driver to update his bugster driver to 99, yeah. and it becomes Perfect Knockout, which is a great name. It is a great name. I think the cool thing now is that he can combine the two... Like before, when you had the the thing that switched into yeah. either perfect puzzle or yeah. into knockout, yeah. Um, now he can combine both those together, yeah. Uh, which makes me really want Paradox to steal Tattle Fantasy and the other and Kantai Collection, yeah. To mix those two together, do you um, think they'll become one rider? I guess if M can become two riders, maybe you think uh, Hero and Taiga will have to become the one rider. That has guns, the Final Fantasy gunman. Oh, they'll become Gogeta? Yeah. Or Vegito? Yeah. Maybe. I don't see why not. And then M becomes ride armor for them? <laughs> I don't know. He becomes something. Uh, I, I could see it, but there's a story reason that M is two. Yes. Right? And they with, with the thing confirming that Paradox is the bugster, yeah. he actually uses that. Yeah. He wants M to fight him. M won't do it. Yeah. And so he's like, fuck it. I'll force you to transform. Yeah. Takes over M's body, turns into Mighty Action X like the twins. Double bro- brothers? Yeah, the double brothers. And their two personalities are two separate common Riders. Yeah. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it was cool. They they used it, and I'm like, wow. That's neat. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we got the final, supposed final villain. Yeah. 
uh, in 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 his ultimate form. Uh, meanwhile, Poppy, who is now good again, yep. um, is going through Dan Kurota's old stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, is hopefully looking for a cure to the Booksers. And she's in like weird like Vietnam flashbacks. Yeah. Uh, and so like you had a theory that you think Poppy is. Oh, Dan Kurota's mom. Dan Kurota's mom. Yeah. And <laughs> it's just like, or his nurse, maybe. See, I wanted to be his mom because, like, why would Dan Kurota be giving away all his secret game plans to just his nurse? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So, like, maybe it's his mom, like, Poppy was was his mother. Or or was the, because the, she's a bugster, right? Yeah. The person she infected was his, his mom. mom. Yeah. So. Uh, and they're, they re, you know, they re-released the old Common Rider X Aid. <laughs> they re released Dark X Aid Level yeah. Zero. They got that sick X Aid remaster. You mean that uh Level Zero Common Rider Gem? Yeah. Common Oh yeah, it's called Common Rider Gem. Yeah. Common Rider Gem. And they're like, yo, that that driver's dangerous. Can't use it. It's that HD remaster. It's that HD remaster. <laughs> Your current software can't handle it. I'm telling you, that's how they're gonna do the prestige for him, because he's gonna go through all the levels again, but only as Common Rider Gem. Maybe. Unless Poppy is... No, it's, it, from the thing, it looked like Poppy put on that suit. You think so? Or do you think she... Re- you think Gem's spirit lives... Like, he copied a version of himself into... Oh, you think he, like, <laughs> co- downloaded his... Br- or uploaded his brain to a server? Yeah. And he... But he doesn't have a human form anymore. He's only Common Rider. That's why he's Common Rider Gem. So he's Zordon. Yeah. Maybe. That'd be cool. And he becomes a good guy. And I don't know about good guy. What if he was like reluctantly a good guy? Yes. Like he's like, I'm going to still fucking kill you all. Yeah. As soon as I get my human form. Yeah. yeah. I'll help you out in the, in the meantime. Yeah. And he becomes the final upgrade armor for X-Aid. All right. All right. What is it? Would just be like double mighty action X? Like it's both. I don't know. I, I haven't thought that far. What yet. if it's three personalities? Oh That's crazy. And the only way Gem can get his form back is if he summons the third Common Rider brother. What the, the long lost Wario? Oh my God! Let's not go. The there. Waluigi of. Ooh, gross! No, would see? Wouldn't Taiga be like Waluigi? Which one's Taiga again? Uh, with the little girl. Oh, I no, I he's Wario. Do you think? You think there's nothing I cannot caught is Wal- Waluigi? Yeah. All right, sure, fine. Yeah, Taiga, Taiga is and her and his girl pal is is Wario and, and Daisy. Okay, fine. Yeah, I guess. Then the Poppy guys. is Peach. Yeah. Oh, right. M is Mario. Yeah. It's got M in his name. Come on. Maybe. Wait, does that make Laser Yoshi? Yes. Oh. Because he is disposable. <laughs> yes. Oh. Oh man. Savage. Oh. oh. Sad. Because he rides him too. He does. He does, and then he gets rid of him. For that extra double jump. Yeah, for that extra double jump, you know. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, Common Rider It's promoting the next episode as the final battle. Common Rider is Mario Bros. Yeah. So, yeah, look forward to next week's episode. Yeah, they're they're ta- tagging it as... Uh, here. This is like, yo... Final battle's here. Final battle's here. Yeah. Sephiroth has come. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we know that's not true, but... Because there's still, like, what, 14 episodes left, probably? 18? 18 episodes? Like 48 episodes? Well, this is episode 29. Well, the next one will be 30. Yeah. And it usually goes to like 48. Okay. Like 18 more episodes? Yeah, so. We shall go. see. Yeah. Uh, and that's the end of the episode. Before we go, uh, I'll leave you all with a, a, a tip of the week. You ready to hear it? Sure. Before, unless you have anything else you want to say? No. I don't have any tips. So my tip of the week before we go is remember that a belt... It's not for holding your pants up. Yes, it is. Buy the correct pant size the first time around. No, what if you have pants that you've grown out of or into? Then you buy a new set of pants. No, i economical that way. No. Wait, are you watching that fashion channel again? No. No, I'm not. Where'd you, where'd you get this tip from? Uh, I got it from the GQ magazine when I was at Chapters. I don't got that kind of money, GQ. <laughs> All right, I got to make these pants last. No. When I bought those pants, I was a 36. Now I'm a 34. What am I going to do? Wear a belt. Here's the thing, though. 
it's not about the waist. It's about how stupid those pants look at you now. Because now the legs are extra thick. Yeah, they do. They look, you, yeah. I look like DMX <laughs> jeans. Exactly. Yeah. It's not about fitting on your waist. It's about making the whole ensemble come together. Listen. Don't. Why do you buy a watch? Don't think. Not to tell time. No, to do math on it. Because I bought a calculator watch. Ah, but you bought it as a fashion accessory. So no, I bought like, it to do math. No, no, you did it so you could be like, hey, look how cool I am with my calculator. I bought watch. it to do math. You said, look how cool. Strictly I- to do basic math. To calculate tips. No. To calculate tax. Same with a belt. All utility. A belt's only there to bring Hold the color my of your up. suit together. Hold my pants up. There you go. That's your tip of the week. I'll be back next week with uh, another one. It's a terrible tip. Enjoy. I hate that tip.